peace and blessings be upon you all. I am, am not going down, but I'll be definitely down with you all in spirit. And uh, I'm very, very touched and impressed by the commitment that everyone, that everyone is making around this table, above and beyond any, um, you know, organizational commitment. I think there's an extraordinary commitment among the individuals around this table um, to, and, and realize that sometimes actually it's not all about the numbers, um, that a small group of people can send a very powerful message. And uh, I pray and hope that that is communicated and that there is a tremendous amount of learning. I mean, I know uh, you all will come back, inshallah, that much more equipped to help advance the vision of the United Congress, which is very, very committed to going beyond just rhetorical solidarity, statements of solidarity between black, Latino, and Muslim communities. Um, but this is happening in Arizona at a time when not just the national conversation and debate about immigrants and where their place is, but where, I mean, we know there's an extraordinary debate going around about Muslims and, you know, do they really belong here? Are they really, I mean, things that, you know, Stephen Colbert and others are making light of because if, they, if you, they're so ridiculous and horrific that either you cry in horror or you just break down laughing. That's in the news reports that in New York, you know, uh, Stephen Colbert did this whole thing in New York uh, a couple days ago. They want one burial ground, uh, a group of people want to dig up the dead Muslim mm. bodies in that grave because they don't want their grave site to be contaminated by proximity to Muslims. That's the type of, those folks are not dissimilar to the folks who don't want immigrants in Arizona. But the fact that Arizona is seen like a Mexican thing, a Latino thing, and Muslims, and unfortunately Muslims in Arizona, some of them aren't out in the trenches as we would want them to be, right? With this fight about, you know, 1070. And so we still very disconnected. And the fact that, you know, very few people are making the historic connection that 21 years ago Arizona was again in the spotlight because it was one of the two states in this country that refused to acknowledge or celebrate Martin Luther King's holiday, mm -hmm. you know? And the governor then, you know, was also in the news and spotlight because, you know, of all the things. And it was Senator McCain who first voted it down and then tried to acquiesce. And so there's a lot, there's a lot of history and a rich history here about our own struggles. And I think you, and it takes some time the trip, uh, it takes sometimes a two-day car trip to be able to process everything that you're going to be able to see and hopefully throughout the conversations and discussions, uh, this group will come back as small as it is, empowered to really help the rest of the Congress make the necessary powerful connections that we need to be making at this time in this country probably more than ever because it is absolutely urgent. It is life death. Josina didn't say that among part of the things. I mean, it's important to have a person who's in part Japanese American also on this trip. You know, um, you know, we can talk about the history of internment camps and what that meant for a whole other group of people that get often so disconnected from, you know, this conversation. How often are Latinos, African Americans, Black folks, Muslims, everyone having this conversation about our histories and connecting them to where we need to go as a community. So I, I really believe that this is an extraordinarily powerful uh, message that you all are making, but more than just a message, you know, I pray that it's a, it's a spiritual trip as well. I mean, I really believe that this is a trip that, you know, uh, sometimes traveling is a very spiritual exercise. Um, mm -hmm. We have a, a, a prophetic tradition that says there there's three types of prayers that are always answered by the Creator, right? Uh, one of them is the prayer of the traveler, right? And that was especially back in the day, the traveler was the person who took on extraordinary hardships, but also the traveler began to kind of exist in a whole other sphere. When you're traveling, particularly for long periods of time, you're, you're not home, you're not there, you begin to reflect on the world and your place in the world differently. So the idea of the prayer of the traveler, particularly the, the, the traveler who's traveling for a righteous reason, and I believe you all are traveling for a very righteous reason, you're not traveling to get rich, 
You're not traveling to, for any personal gains, right? You're traveling for a really important cause. And the idea is that you all are also in a space to connect to the Creator and to one another in a very powerful way. So I believe this is a spiritual trip, and I pray that uh, the Most High will bless this trip and make it one that protects you as you go down and, and fill it with something that is personally, spiritually fulfilling for each and every one of you as you get to know one another and possibly get to know yourself a little more. Uh, so I'm very, I'm very proud and very excited about what's uh, taking place.